MLMs, pyramid schemes, anyone who's been on the internet space long enough knows that those are basically synonymous with a scam. And many of us kind of scoff at the fact that they keep coming up year after year. How is it that when it's so obvious that these promises are too good to be true and that the language and the way that the business works is kind of dubious at best, how is it that these otherwise normal people are falling for something that feels so clearly to be a scam? I mean, there's the old adage, if it's too good to be true, it's probably not true. But hey, maybe Zendaya really is in my DMs and I need to send her $500 in order to save her. In MLMs and pyramid schemes, about only 1% of people will ever make a profit, any amount of profit, which means that 99% of people are at risk of losing everything that they've invested into it, or at the very least being at a loss. This risk is pretty high as many MLMs and pyramid schemes require hundreds of dollars up front in order to even get started, as well as as reoccurring costs every month or week or however long in order to continue moving product. Anytime that we hear about percentages going upstream and a need for recruitment and those to grow the base under you, a lot of us have alarm bells ringing. But something that one author points out is that when you break these down into the basic building blocks, you can actually kind of relate it to the normal nine to five grind. You'll go in, you'll work hard, much harder than those above you for a pretty small wage that hasn't ever increased with inflation, the risk that they might lay you off at any time and you'll be <laughs> down for luck, for a CEO that will make millions on your time and just kind of live comfortably. But if you're savvy enough, if you have a good plan and you know what you're doing, you can rise above that. You can be part of that 1% that succeeds. You could be the next CEO, billionaire, make a tons of money and make your family comfortable. MLMs feed into the same ideas as the American dream. If you work hard enough, if you're just different enough, you'll rise above. You'll be different from all the other people next to you and you'll be that 1%. That it's possible for anyone. And if you're in a vulnerable state, you don't have any other way to monetize your time or talents, then it might just seem like it's worth it. This might actually be why us that are younger, more chronically online, so easily clown on the idea of MLMs. Of course, we don't buy their idea of financial stability and rising above by just pulling up your bootstraps, because we also don't believe that same lie when it comes from corporations and the general idea of capitalism and the American dream. We don't fall for the allure of these scams. Instead, we fall for other scams, like thinking we can be content creators. It doesn't help that these MLMs prey on emotional vulnerability as well. Whether you're in a financial hardship already or you're going through a major life change, you're in a spot where the emotional stressful tactics that they use and taking exploitation of trust are more likely to work. One author put it, and I really like this quote, well, what do I know about anything? You feel confident in your marriage and then suddenly your spouse leaves and you're like, well, I guess I have the whole world wrong. I'm gonna try. And then any MLM. They specifically said Amway, but really any MLM. They swoop in when you're down on your luck, you're desperate, and you'll fall for it. MLMs are a symptom of a problem. People being in a financially vulnerable place where they can't make enough money to make ends meet, where they can't afford basic living and are desperate for this solution, that's part of a systematic problem. But when you have a problem as big as capitalism, as the financial hardship that we're largely facing right now, you're not just gonna see one symptom. And when there's something as lucrative as MLMs, there's going to be something else that comes along to try and cash in. A trend that makes people more vulnerable to MLMs is financial literacy. If you don't have financial literacy, then you, one, might not see the tactics and the 
shady business practices you're also more likely to be in a financially vulnerable place that again makes you susceptible as we've talked about before gen z while we seem very aware of mlms is based off of one article the least financially literate. Now, I do want to say, I have some skepticism on this as Gen Z is also the youngest generation that would even be tested for financial literacy. And so some of it is that there's just not enough life experience for certain things that would be tested. Further, the same article said that Gen Z was the most likely to take lessons on financial literacy, which seems a bit contradictory and seems like it would kind of bridge that gap if the gap is currently existing. But either way, I wouldn't be surprised if this lack of financial literacy is part of why instead of MLMs, Gen Z and the younger generations are instead falling for a different trap. Crypto, NFTs, digital courses where you can make millions just like this random ass guy who has never actually done this business venture. All of them have the same promises, the same layout as MLM, a promise for financial freedom, comfort, being your own boss, it's captivating, and it's all a lie. It concerns me that for all of our ability to spot MLMs anywhere in the wild and even suss out the email that says that it's going to be an MLM before we even open it, people are losing billions of dollars on these other forms of the same scam. Let's actually break down the similarities. First, the high-risk nature. As I said, billions of dollars have been lost in total on the crypto market. You have to put in money in order to get started with this, oftentimes large amounts of money, and at the risk of losing everything. There's a large buy-in with absolutely no guarantee of returns, oftentimes those at the top actively working to inflating prices so that they can make the money and you're left out of luck. Second, using that same language and idea of selling the American dream. Many of these people sell the idea that you can pull yourself up, that you're strong, that you're different, that they succeeded because they were on that grind set hard enough and that anyone can do it. Anyone can get out of the rat race. You just have to listen to them. You just have to pay them. It's the same idea of selling the idea of the American dream, but without any guarantee of a return. And third, the emotional manipulation. You trust these people. These are content creators and personalities that you've been following for ages. You watch them for hours every single week. You think you know them. You think you can trust them. Well, if you don't subscribe to their ideas, if you don't buy into their courses, then what does that make you? At best, you're left out of a cool experience, of a great possibility. And at worst, you're demeaned. You're worthless. You're a beta. <laughs> you're all of these negative things that you would never want to be. But you can be in with the cool kids, as long as you pay them enough money. It's all the same tactics. It's all the same selling points just for a different product. And as much as I oftentimes just ignore these sides of the internet and kind of think they're very reductive, both in terms of their selling techniques and the general attitudes that they push, it kind of makes me sad. I think we've reached the point with the MLM conversation where we realize that these people are victims. These were single moms that were just trying their best to make a better life for their kids got taken advantage of. And I think it's very easy to get lost in just the side of these YouTubers being scammers and the ideas that they push and villainizing that side of things. And I think we're forgetting that we need to be educating their fan bases. I'm certainly not the person to do it. Politely, I don't think that a young girl who enjoys dressing up and wearing pretty things and talking about girl bosses and stuff is going to push that message to people who watch Logan Paul or any of the right-wing extremist men. I do wonder how this new wave of education can happen, how people can spread that there are hallmarks of when these things are scams and that there's ways for these people to not lose their money. Because unlike the influencers that are pushing them, they don't necessarily have the disposable income to throw at this. 
they were vulnerable people that would benefit from actual changes in a system and not just from some random course. I think it's also more frustrating because so many of these modern grind set things are also being packaged with a very right-wing political view that these people are often actively working against changes that would help them that would help them have sustainable wages so they could live comfortably that would help them have more ethical workplaces so it doesn't feel like a rat race and instead they're breeding more toxicity and more harm but yeah that's just been my opinions and views and observations backed by some articles and research on how cryptocurrency nfts and all these dude bro lessons are just the second part of the mlm scams now with modern dude bro packaging if you enjoyed i do want to continue making videos again so please subscribe and comment any ideas down below and i hope to see you soon